Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to get started recording in Reaper. Alright, and so I'll just get right into it in the DAW. And the, when you open Reaper for the first time, it's going to look like this, most likely. It's going to have a different theme, but that's not really important. So let's say you just purchased a new guitar plugin or bass library, contact for drums, or whatever it may be. You're going to notice that when you open a track with Control T or double clicking, you're going to notice that even if you do like a scan for new plugins or F5, it's not really going to pull up the new plugin if you didn't already install it before you opened Reaper. And to fix that, you're not going to scan it as you just saw because nothing new is going to pop up. What you're going to do is go to Options, oops, Options and Preferences or Control P and scroll all the way down almost to the bottom to VST here. And from there, if you installed it into a different file path, such as like a different SSD or hard drive, you're going to go here to edit path list. And then you're going to add path to whichever folder or directory that you installed that plugin to. And once you've done that, you can open up the effects window and hit the effects button up here and then scan for new plugins. And that should come right back up. Sometimes with Developers, they will add their plugins into iLock as a way of like a piracy protection kind of thing. If that is the case, you will receive an email with a code, a serial, serial number. You're going to enter that right here. And once that is there, it should activate and you'll be able to use that VST or plugin, whatever it may be, in your DAW without any issue with activations or anything of that kind. If, for example, again, you are using contact for a drum library or a bass library, you can open up native access. And again, with that code that it will send you in your email, you'll come up to here and add a serial and you will just paste it in there. Add, it'll say it, it can take up to a few minutes, but it's usually pretty fast. Then just locate it in your library, click install, and then repeat the first process that I showed you before. Once you have that pasted in, you'll probably have to scroll through all of this because there is no search, or there is a search, but I don't use it. <laughs> you'll look for the plugin that you recently just purchased and just click install. Unfortunately, with native access, not that I've seen at least, you cannot change where it is installed. So that is something to note. So let's say you want to create just a quick, quick good card. <laughs> So let's say you want to record a quick guitar track. First thing you're going to want to make sure of is when you create the track, you're going to have an input setting here. Make sure that it is the same input that you plugged your guitar into in your interface. So in my case, I have six activated. If you're not seeing anything like this, it is likely an issue with your setup in Reaper. And to fix that, you're going to go to Options, Preferences, or Control P and look for device under audio. I use ASIO, and, uh, and since I use Focusrite, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the Focusrite USB ASIO because that was the best one for my interface. If this is unclicked, you're gonna click on that and enable. So the first will just obviously be input one. If, you're in, if your interface only has two inputs, you'll obviously click two. But since I have up to eight and I only use up to six, I'm just going to pick six. Output range, it's okay to leave at one and two as that'll just be a stereo configuration. Click OK. And once you set that up, that should be as you would expect. <laughs> Disclaimer, because I was a moron when I first started, I put my guitar in input two and I didn't know which was which for some reason. Left. If you're using a focus right, at least the leftmost is going to be one and the right one is going to be two. Now there has been a lot of debate on input levels on the interface when you're recording through an amp sim. I'm just going to go with the information that I received. So I was taught to raise the input up until it was just about clipping 
but now that's wrong apparently. So what we're going to do is turn the input gain on the interface all the way down to zero. And if you're gonna do that, you're gonna want to make absolutely sure that when you're plugging in your guitar, you're switching the input on the interface to instrument instead of line, because line would be something like a microphone. Instrument is obviously something like a guitar. Guitar time. And now say I'm going to record a guitar track because I just picked up my guitar. The default setting in Reaper, this little like speaker icon is going to look like that. It's going to not be filled in. You're just going to click on that if you want to hear yourself recording through your DAW. And then click on record and... <laughs> guitar volume was turned down. And... Very out of tune, very nice. But we have audio, and that's a start. And from there, just click on the click on the effects window, and just open up the plugin of your choice. I will just use the Gojira X. And from there, as you can probably hear, there is audio, and we can just start playing. Nice, nice. But putting guitar down for a moment, say we want to do MIDI drums because you want to make a demo song. So the nice thing about that is you can right click and open space in your tracks and insert virtual instrument on a new track. Click on that and where's contact? There we go, so contact. It'll automatically route contact through your DAW. So just click OK or yes. And then just pick the drum plugin that you have either installed or that you prefer. And come on, come on. There we go. And now we have audio. That is no problem at all. However, you're going to see that when you're mixing, you're gonna to want to use separate tracks for different drums to get the best optimal sound for your mix. So for example, right now, everything is going through output one. So snare, bombs, kick, cymbals, etc. To fix that, all you gotta do, click on this arrow, multi-advanced or multi-out advanced. And now you can see that there is multiple outputs Scroll down a bit. And if you want to get a bit more custom, that is no problem. Just go to each drum. So I like to combine kick in and out to one, overheads and so on. I leave the same, but I will go ahead and just, oops. I will go ahead and just go through and choose which output I would like each drum to be just like that. So I have one is kick, two is snare, three is toms, three to five is toms. So now if I do kick, it only comes out of one while keeping the room in overhead default, as you can see, snare, toms, no bleed through, just what you want. And if you want bass, the nice thing about Reaper as well, is you don't need to set a different track type. You can just create a track and throw whatever you want on there, whether it be MIDI or just regular recording, whatever other kind of recordings there might be. So my preferred bass library is going to be in contact. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Gin Bass 2 here. And this one is not hard to set up. You just quite literally load it. And you're good to go. So then how in the world do you program the MIDI? I don't have a keyboard except for the one I type on. Well, I got you. I'm going to show you right now. You ready? So you're going to click on, say, you want the drums. For this case, it'll be under the contact track. Insert on the top. I know I'm kind of blocking, but then there's an option, the second option always, new MIDI item and it'll drop down a MIDI track here. You can adjust how long you'd like it to be. And all you're gonna do is double click. And I don't have mine set up all nice and neat like a lot of other people, but I know C1 is kick.
Just something quick. And the way you would just get those notes, you'll notice that when you click, it's not going to do anything other than play random notes in the plugin. You're just going to have to double click and it'll put notes wherever you would like. To get rid of many at the same time, right click and drag, delete, and it'll get rid of all of them. But yeah, uh, once you get something somewhat decent that you would like for your demo, you're good to go. And for bass, it's going to be the same idea. So insert new MIDI item and double click. And for a lot of, at least for my kind of genre that I stick to, the bass heavily follows the kick drum. And rather than editing something on the bass track, closing, going to, to the drums and seeing which bar it's on and so on, all you got to do, real simple, there's a little eye icon right here. Click that and you'll be able to see whatever MIDI is on that track. So in this case, it's contact. I know that's the drums. So show drums and it is there. And I'll just do like a really simple. Perfect. Just like that, our demo is coming along. <laughs> Ready to the next big hit here, guys. But yeah, quick tip. If you're doing some metal stuff like Brain Dead Old Me, and you want to split your bass signal so it sounds not like this, and more like this, all you gotta do is Put your bass plugin on one track, and then you're going to route the send. So you're gonna just click this button here to route. You can click and drag, and you're just gonna drop it on two different sub bass tracks. So I have this one going down to the distortion track, and this one going down to the sub track. Names are as implies. and mixed together. And you got a pretty good thing going on. However, important thing to note when you're doing that is if you are, make sure that when you're sending, it's gonna open this window. You're going to want to change this box here. It's gonna say one of these on default. You're gonna make sure it's pre-fader post effects or else you won't be able to turn down the DI track and it'll sound very bad. That being said, if you look at one of my actual like serious projects like this one, you're going to see that a lot of these tracks are pretty different than what they're going to look like for you when you are kind of just adding tracks. As you can see towards the bottom here, like some of them are indented in and some are not. Some are just kind of like stragglers out there. The reason for that is their buses. So the reason that you're going to want to use a bus is say you have two of your guitar tracks, this one and this one. It's a lot easier to just throw your tracks into a bus or folder and throw the amp sim on that folder so it affects both of those tracks rather than having to load your CPU with multiple instances of that plugin. There is debate on the fact that having two instances is actually less intensive on your CPU, but I've never had really, I've really never had issues with that. And another benefit is say you want to compress or EQ your guitars rather than doing it one at a time. You can just affect both at the same time with that folder. To make a folder, just make a few tracks here and say these are my guitar tracks right here. You're just going to click and drag up into the left like that. And you're going to see that blue line kind of like indent in a bit. Release the button and you have a folder. So now if you solo it, you'll only hear those tracks like this. So if I want to only hear guitars, this is my guitar folder.
or if I only want to hear my bass or drums and so on. And it just makes it overall easier to get into mixing and just getting everything soloed out that you want, muted that you want really quickly and efficiently rather than like, oh, this is my kick drum and I don't want to hear that. I just want to only hear the snare. So it's a lot easier to just make a quick folder and mix through those, in my opinion. Another thing for when you're tracking guitar, just to make your life a little easier, say your song starts here, obviously it starts there. When you hit record, you're going to see mine has two bars before the song starts. By default, when you hit record, it's going to just immediately start playing. So how do you fix that? You're going to right click on the metronome here on the top left, and you're going to come down here to pre-roll before recording. And when you click on that, you can set how many measures. So I have two. That gives me more than enough time to like kind of get the tempo in my head, get the part ready, and then just record when I need to. So it'll be eight clicks on my metronome before on that ninth click I know to start playing. And why I like that is say I'm recording a track like here. If I were to start two measures back, it's going to do four. say I recorded the guitar, I'm going to always have to kind of cut it or drag it or whatever. And if there's already stuff recorded back here, you're going to see if I record over this, then it kind of causes issues and you're going to have a weird time. So it's just easier to set the metronome to go before your recording starts, just so you can avoid that issue. And you might have noticed that when I stop my recording, or I could just hit a button and it'll automatically restart. That is not a feature automatically enabled in Reaper. And to fix that, you're going to go up here to Actions, Show Action List, move that over for you. You're going to click on New Action, and then it'll open up something like this. And I have, I just named it Re-Record. So I have transport stop. You can filter and just type in literally transport stop. Make sure it's stop delete all recorded media. That way it doesn't save the, save the bad take or the, what you messed up. It's going to delete it automatically and then transport record. That's just so it starts to re-record after that. After that, I just hit space once I get the take I like and then save and I'm good to go. These are just some basic things that you would need to know and just set up in general to get started recording your music, your demos, or whatever it is that you want to do in your DAW. But all in all, with enough practice and patience, blood, sweat, and tears, thousands of hours of pulling your hair out trying to get everything to work, you will eventually be happy with the level that you are at and record some sick fucking shit like so. That's enough of that, because that's an upcoming song, and I can't spoil everything. And that is my video this week. If you liked it, go ahead and like the video. Subscribe if you would like. I hate saying that every time. If you have any other tutorial suggestions, or if you don't want to see anything else, or me go over how to organize a mix, or you know whatever it may be, just go ahead and let me know. I'm always reading comments, and I'm still responding to comments on videos that I've had over a year ago. So if you have anything you would like to add, or discuss, please do leave a comment. And yeah, the song in the intro and this outro is going to be coming out very soon, so if you want to see that, click on this or scan this and this, and you'll hear my previous releases. But that's enough shameless plugging for me today. Thanks.